Welcome back, everyone. I am Zerondin, and you are tuned in to another Pro StarCraft II replay cast. And today's combatants here on Cloud Kingdom in the top right corner is going to be the Red Zerg Liquid TLO. And in the bottom left corner, his friend, his teammate, Liquid C. And he is, of course, the Blue Terran. A little bit of chatter going on there between the players. Uh, just some normal chit chat and whatnot. So, some friendly banter and should be a friendly match here between these two players, obviously being teammates. Uh, just a quick note, I realized last game I called it Cloud Kingdom. It was obviously Daybreak. This is Cloud Kingdom. Uh, so if you watch that previous game, I did throw up an annotation. I just wanted to point that out. I don't know why I'm pointing out my own flaws, or my mistakes rather, but uh, why the heck not? Either way, I fixed it, and I got this one correct. So let's see how these two pro guys do when they smash their forces against one another. Obviously a nice ZVT going on here. Um, I'm always partial to a little bit of Zerg, probably my favorite race to watch. However, I seem to be better at playing Terran. Um, of course, I don't play too much. I am not the best player. I usually stick to mono battles or something like that. Either way, uh, we do have a barracks going down here for C. No gas, no expansion hints just yet. We do have quite a few resources there for Liquid TLO, and that was, of course, for his fast expand before pool. We have seen a lot of pro players putting a pool down after their expansion now as it doesn't hurt their process too much. And uh, he has, of course, gone ahead and done that. We have a drone of his selected somewhere. There he is. I don't know why I had that selected. Uh, spawning pool going down for him. He does have an overlord just now starting to get into position. Uh, might be able to do a little scouting with him if he chooses to do so. Uh, the marine is actually just about to come out. So he's going to want to put that in its usual spot. Probably going to head down and get a little bit of scouting to see if that natural is going up yet. The orbital, or the, yeah, orbital coming down for C there. And a bit of drone transfer starting to go down here for liquid TLO. Um, a little early. Obviously, those guys are going to be long distance mining for a little bit. Uh, not going to hinder him a huge amount, but those little steps in the game can sometimes hinder you. And uh, TLO was supply block there just for a moment, but I don't believe he intended to build anything else, so I think that was a on-purpose kind of system. However, C is supply blocked at the moment, and uh, he's stuck in what he's got at the moment. However, he does have a supply depot already on the way, so just a little bit here. He will get back to regular SCV production and Marines, of course, as well. Obviously, working on his expansion still, Obviously, those uh, big command centers take quite a while to construct. Do have the overlords sitting on that very intelligent little ledge there. If you go to TLO's view and or C's view and take it away from his control, you obviously can't see the overlord. Of course, it's out of range of vision as well. But whatever, you get the point there. Uh, the second overlord bending around over here, probably going to go and hide right about here. Uh, that's a common place for them to sit as well. Allows for nidus options or maybe some ventral sack dropping later or just a nice scout in later when he needs some information, a critical point in the game. Another orbital coming down for C. He's going to need that as well, obviously. Uh, we do have a nice queen line sitting here. Um, I would suspect there are three queens on the field then. Indeed, there are. I don't believe there's any zerglings just yet. No, in fact, there are zero zerglings on the map. Uh, not even a scouting bunch just yet. We do have a third queen, or a fourth queen rather, coming come out. And two more on the way. So he's going to be up to five, six queens actually very soon. Uh, so start looking for some serious creep spread coming across the map. Because he is clearly planning to do that. And it makes me wonder if we aren't going to see a queen heavy build beyond just six queens. Perhaps uh, he might mass queens even as well uh, and as the Queens pop out we will watch and see if he decides to build any more or if that is enough for him and I see Hellions on the field slipping across the map here going to move in and they're gonna meet that rude rude Queen wall here and uh, they're just not gonna be able to do much at this time 
And we'll have to see if Liquid C does go for that mech play that he's been doing a lot, or if he chooses to go for bio or something like that. Uh, we do have a swap going down here. I would expect Siege Tanks to start in production, as well as some double Marines. It doesn't look like the Hellions engaged at all. Uh, they probably saw those Queens, especially now they did just see the Queens, and uh, realize he'd have to back off. However, if he does zip up here quick, he's going to get a free drone kill. However, he does ignore that, hoping to beat the Queens around the corner. He does not do that. Uh, we do have a Roach Warren up, and as well as an Evo Chamber going up. And uh, he's going to shoot at this hatchery for a while, going to force TLO to make some sort of decision. He brings a couple Queens up, and... Uh, Oh, check that out. Liquid TLO saving his drone by making an extractor with it. Very nice little trick he did there. We'll see if he cancels that to save that drone even further. Maybe he just lets it finish to use that gas later. It does seem to be the case. He's just going to let that finish up. But a very nice save there. Uh, he's got a building out of it now instead of a dead unit. And check that out. He's even creep spreading with overlords now as they puke on the map going to allow those tumors to travel even quicker across the map. Obviously, a lair is on the field as well. We got drones going into the third now. Uh, again, a little bit of long distance mining. It's not quite finished. However, both of his bases are pretty near to saturation, so he's probably getting more use out of those guys right now. An Overlord did go down somewhere. We've got a supply block for TLO. A few Hellions have come in. They're going to get a few drones roasted here. I think five total have gone down there. Uh, so... A nice little attack. He didn't lose any Hellions, so that was very nice. Uh, he does, however, have one at two hit points. He's going to be very careful with that guy. And he's going to lose it right there if he's not careful. Wow. Very close to losing that. If the uh, Queens had shot the right target, it would have gone down. And this creep spread is making the Hellion harass very difficult for C here. He's going to lose that damaged Hellion. He's going to get a few more drones, though. He's going to move into the drone line here. Can he get that crucial burn on the few more drones he needs? There's quite a few vulnerable here. Few more did go down, but he did not get a bulk burn. Uh, very nice defend there by TLO. That's uh, Overseer shooting on through the base here, uh, getting some nice scouting done. Um, obviously, TLO wants that scouting, and we do have some missile turrets going down now. Siege tanks, of course, on the map and sieging up. Uh, whew, the Overseer barely ekes out of there, and uh, he's probably going to go home and heal for a bit or find a nice safe corner to sit in. I do have an idle SCV down here. Uh, C might want to take advantage of that guy and actually have him do some work. Uh, we have 1-1 one, one upgrades coming out for C. I think TLO indeed has 1-1 one, one coming out as well. Looks like he's going for the melee attack, not the ranged attack for the moment. Trying to find some roaches or something. Where are they all at? They're all... No, that's queens. There's a couple roaches. Is that all he has on the field? He, indeed, he's got four roaches and six queens. TLO is completely working on defensive formation here. He's depending on those queens and a, just a few roaches to try and spread his influence across the map and do some crazy stuff. And check this out. He's even going to start creep spread from the north up here. This is getting wonky creep spread. I'm really loving this crazy ambitious creep spread that I'm seeing out of TLO. Not really something I've seen before that that ambitious of a creep spread that he actually moves queens and overlords into position to form independent creep fields, as it were. So I was watching these roaches, wondering if they're going to do a little sneak attack in here. Unfortunately, that bunker is going to cause him a little difficulty. And uh, even more creep spread going on up here. Uh, it looks like the queens might be going over to add to that spread as well. Maybe a little down here as well. I mean, just an insane amount of creep now on this map. Literally almost half of the map... 50%, not just like made it halfway across the map, like literally 50% of the map is creep tumors. Well, not creep tumors, but creep spread. Uh, do have a Viking now, though. He's out and he's going to start harassing the overlords, causing a few issues for them. And uh, they're not going to be able to do their creep poopy without the queens around. So uh, quite a few overlords going to see it running across the map, hiding, trying to go home. Obviously, though, this queen is going to get to work on that Viking. That Viking is going to have to leave. Cannot one on one beat a queen. Uh, we do have a big move out, though, by C, and this could ultimately be quite dangerous for TLO. He just now has about 30 lanes on the field. Big engagement here, though, with those Infestors that I was just about to mention. Quite a few Infested Terran coming down. The tanks are going to start shooting each other if that happens right there. You need to be careful about that. 
Very nice control. A few takes do shoot each other, but not bad. Uh, cleaned up the Zerglings and the Infested Terrans pretty easily. No big losses there. Going to start marching in. Might not be a bad idea to drop the mule and repair that tank a little bit. However, it may not be needed. He's going to move in here, and I do not see this hatchery standing unless something crucial goes down here. Fungal growth or something like that is really needed right now. We do have Carapace and Melee Attacks 2 coming in for TLO, but not in time to save that hatchery right there. The fourth does go down, and a big bulky reinforcement group is moving in. Looks like they may have scouted up here to see if there's anything up there. Of course, all they found was creep fields and tumors. And everything for TLO is quickly collapsing. A nice fungal there, but not enough. A very good fungal right there. But again, he's going to need more of those. A few units starting to go down to the fungals. If he can keep getting those, he may be able to hold this off. Another comes in. Another nice fungal. A few more go down. Quite a few starting to get low on health. Unfortunately, a lot of those investors are getting low on energy. The Ultralisk Cavern dies. Only a few ultis are going to get out. My favorite unit. So sad to see them not get built. There's one. He's going to die really badly quick. However, he's just slicing and dicing through those very fungled up bio ball units. And only two tanks remain. One goes down to Zergling. And there's another Zergling on that guy. He's going to go down as well. And, uh... While a very hurtful loss to Liquid Sea's army, he did some very, very nice damage. Took out that Ultralisk Cavern, obviously painful. Managed to take out the Hatchery there and the Hatchery at the third. And uh, it looks like he might have an alternate Ultralisk Cavern up somewhere. I thought I saw another Ultralisk building. Maybe that was just a latecomer that he built at the last second. Uh, there is obviously the hive tech as well. We do have more units here moving out. A couple Zergling and Ultralisks move in here. Nice surround there. Does anything load up and retreat, or are they just going to brutalize and win? I cannot tell here. Um, and look at that. The Ultralisks getting a little scared off. Need to move in there and finish that off, though. And indeed, they do. Not too much of an issue for those guys. Uh, the Zergling, however, did not make it out. There's a the bloody mass right there. The Ultralists want to get out of there. Caught a little off guard. One goes down. The other one is going to make it home to fight another day. A few Marines here. A nice surround by the Zerglings, however. That is a lot of Marines. I think the Marines will take this. And oh my gosh, never mind. Without that medevac backup that I'm so used to seeing, they do not stand a chance against those. Are they 3-3 now? 2-2 two, two Zerglings. And uh, do they have the Crackling upgrade? Not yet. No Crackling upgrade just yet. Uh, that would definitely have been in their favor if they had Crackling upgrade. And uh, Queen still ambitiously spreading creep and uh, going to pay for it. That is one dead Queen. Bluey. A sensor tower popping up down here. You can always see those pretty easily on the map when they do pop up. A decent force here for TLO. However, it is just Lings and Infestors. And without the proper fungal play from TLO, this force is going to get mushed against Liquid Sea's army right here. Here come the Lynx trying to get this round. A good fungal there. Two of them go down. Can he keep them up? Two Infestors bite it. Two are retreating. I guess there's five retreating. Two more, though, go down. And, uh, again, an another bad engagement for TLO. Things are just starting to roll in Liquid Sea's favor. Favor. Ah! And another Infestor caught off guard. A nice fungal there, though, to delay it a little bit. He's trying to desperately escape. Unfortunately, he does not make it. And that is another dead Infestor. Another big bulk of Ultralisks here. This might be the last defend, last line for TLO. Can the Ultralisks do it? Some nice fungals in there as well. One of the Ultras, two of the, all of the Ultralisks just sauced. Wow. Bad news bears for those Ultralisks. Another one does come in here. He is not going to like what he gets. He's going to the end of a Goss Rifle. And uh, Liquid TLO GG's out before that guy can even die. Uh, a very nice game, again, by Liquid C. Um, all four of these replays were very nice. I enjoyed casting all of them. Uh, some great play out of him. I especially enjoyed those first two with the mech builds. Uh, you don't see mech terribly often in Wings of Liberty, so I really enjoyed watching and casting that. Either way, um, as usual, it's always fun to watch these pro guys. That's why I try to do a few for you every once in a while. I'll obviously, a bunch extra this week. Possibly next week. I haven't decided yet. 
Um, I'm transitioning between Let's Plays, so it is a brief interlude period. Either way, guys, please do thumbs up and subscribe so I can bring you more pro StarCraft 2 action and more StarCraft 2 action in general. Either way, guys, I am Zerondin. This is going to wrap up this week for StarCraft 2. Obviously, there will still be StarCraft Saturday, uh, but I'm going to do something a little different for Friday. Again, though, I am Zerondin. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the other side.